Hi, and welcome to the next episode of the EdUp AI podcast. I'm Jason Goya, and I'm very excited to be talking to Zach Kinsler today. So, Zach, I have a question for you, and I'm really interested in this. One of the things that really I find compelling about you and your work is that you've talked to a lot of students about AI, and you've had a lot of direct contact with them, and you've had a lot of conversations with them. So what are students saying about AI? So, I mean, there's really three groups of like students is what I would say, uh, like what they're saying about AI. The first is that I'm scared to use it. I don't want to get in trouble. The second is I don't know what it is. This is some crazy thing. I'm not in computer science. I don't want to touch it. And then the third one is like, I love it. I use it every day, but I don't really want to tell you about it, man with a camera on a microphone, because I don't want to get caught cheating. So like, I'll get into all three of those. And the first one is the one I think that's most important, honestly, is that the fact that kids are concerned that they're going to get in trouble to even just learn about it. And like, it's just, they don't, there's no in between. There are these kids that are like, I've heard of it. My teacher says it's bad. I don't want to get in trouble. I don't want to even start learning about it because I don't want to like kind of tempt myself. It's almost like this bad, weird temptation thing. Like I don't want to get myself too into artificial intelligence where I'm going to get myself in trouble. And I mean, it's something I, I, I just started to like really look into is that even the teachers, like teachers are hearing, hey, this is bad. So then they're saying it's bad and they don't even really know why. And it's just leading to this like group of students that is so concerned that they don't want to use AI that they're not even going to, they don't even want to read about it. I talk about it on my LinkedIn. I'm like, hey, go follow me. And it's like, I don't, I don't even want to know. I don't want to know because it's bad. And, and then the second one is the kids that are like interested, but you know, it's kind of not attainable for their skill set in which was kind of the funniest one for me i guess is like i didn't i i got my undergraduate in engineering so i was kind of felt comfortable in technical backgrounds but i mean i guess kids think using ai is like doing computer science sometimes which and i mean again brings it back to teachers not really presenting it correctly and then brings it back even farther like teachers probably don't even under really understand like that this is something that's super easy and then the third one is that like kids that are using it. And usually when I was like interviewing these kids, Jason, it was pretty funny. I'm walking around with a little mini microphone and like asking them questions. And I mean, I would say like this will shock people about 30, 25 to 30% of kids would ask me, please stop recording or please don't send this anywhere because I don't want my teacher to know that I use AI. And I was like, flattering. I'm not that big of a deal though, that your teacher is going to see my <laughs> see your link, see your interview on my LinkedIn post. But the funny thing is that it's like, these kids were telling me that they were using it to send emails, like check papers. Like my favorite one is I write a paper and kids would be like, can you tell me what you think about this? And like, I was like, that is great. That's wonderful. That is how you should be using this. But they don't want their te their English teachers to know that they're doing that. And I mean, I just think that like, that shines the light on the one thing that I think I was able to bring to this community is that the kids are looking for help here almost, even if they don't really realize it. Like a, t a kid should not be worried that I'm going to post something and then they're going to get somehow get in trouble for using artificial intelligence through the back end. And like, I just think that's what's happening a lot is there's just such this disconnect. And I mean, I think it's really important to say that like, we didn't have artificial intelligence 10 years ago when teachers were being taught how to teach. They didn't have artificial intelligence. And like, we're all learning at the same pace. And that's one thing that I don't think anyone's talking about that. Like if a teacher could acknowledge and a student could acknowledge that, Hey, like we know about the same amount, like let's have a conversation about it. Let's learn like what we can do to move forward. So that like, Hey, I'm not worried about you catching me cheating and you're not paranoid that I'm not going to learn anything and take advantage of you. And that's what I think I was really trying to bring to the table because I don't think there's enough people that, like like you said, ed tech conferences don't often have students and teachers at it. They have ed tech CEOs and people in ed tech spaces. And I, I really think that's what's wrong. And that's what's really needs to change is that it needs to be like an open conversation together with everyone. And that's like with students, teachers, and also like acknowledging that Hey, I, we're learning together. You might know more than me as a teacher. You might know more than me as a student, but we're all going to learn together. And I think 
what kids are saying is that we're interested, but we need help. And I think that's also what a lot of teachers are saying, but they won't say it because I mean, if I was doing for something for 40 years, it's pretty hard to admit that I need help with something that seems easy to everyone. But it's just that kids are interested. Even if kids aren't interested, they aren't interested for the right reasons in essence is because they're not, they're not interested. I'm trying to say this in an easy way. They're not interested because if they were to be interested, they would be too interested and then they would get in trouble if that makes sense. So like people want to know what's, what's going on with AI and there's, yeah, people are curious and excited, but scared. And I think that says a lot. Yeah. One of the things Zach, that I think is so important about your answer is how essential it is to push against fear. Because that's one of the things that is still very much there. You talked a lot about for from the student experience, the fact that there's all this fear in the in the classroom that they're not allowed to talk about. They're not actually given a space to actually work through it in a productive way. One of the most shocking experiences I had was about a year ago. I was teaching a group of high school students about AI and it, now it looks, what I was teaching feels so primitive now um, because it, the technology has changed so much. But we started off with just an open conversation about it. And we got about five to 10 minutes in. And one of the students paused me and told me that I was not allowed to talk about it. That there was effectively this gag rule in all of their classes where they weren't allowed to say chat GBT. They weren't allowed to say AI. And so many of them, as became clear in our conversation after that, were using it. They just weren't allowed to mention it in the classroom. So there's this hope that by not mentioning it, it just didn't exist. The problems didn't exist. And so that's a big obstacle. And then the other fear you mentioned is fear of losing position. I think one of the things that we really need to think about is why educators have been pretty reluctant to admit that they're just learning along with students that they're trying to figure things out. And I think that what's really at play there is fear of losing position. And I think that one of the things we need to do is we need to push against that. And I understand it. I understand where that's coming from. I remember coming up as a grad student and learning to teach. And, and really, for my first five years of teaching, I felt like I had to maintain a certain position in the classroom, that I had to have complete knowledge of whatever we were discussing, whatever we were working through. And one of the big shifts for me as a teacher and as a professor and as a person was coming into a classroom and just telling my students, I want to try something. I'm not sure how it's going to work out. And I assumed that that was going to backfire, that students would think he doesn't really know what he's doing. He's just using us as guinea pigs. And the exact opposite happens. I think what actually what happened was it allowed me to create a, more of a community of learning. I think that needs to be the way forward. And one of the things that I also think is so essential in your answer is the focus on open communication. I think that that is when fear starts to dissipate. About a week ago or so, I was asked by someone, you know, how the how their college or university can move forward. They had some policies in place and everything else. And my answer to them was talk to students, give them as much of a voice as you can. And if people are comfortable with it, have teachers listen to them. So teachers talking to students and actually listening to each other. I think something changes as an educator when you hear a student talk about AI. And the flip side too, I think that as a student, something might change as you hear a professor or teacher talk about AI. I think having those conversations in as open a way as we possibly can is super, super important. And we are about 10 minutes in our conversation. Um, it goes by so fast. So anything else you want to throw in, Zach, is at the last minute about how students are thinking about this technology and if students have actually shifted in their understanding of this, of this tech or if it's remained mostly the same? Uh yeah. So, okay. The shift, to answer your shift question, it's pretty funny. So like I went to a smaller university, University of San Diego. So, I mean, I was doing these interviews for about three, two, three months and kind of by the end of it, I mean, kids would run away when they'd see me walking on campus because they didn't want to get talked to. 
But like there was a shift within that community even because one person was talking about it. Like, and I don't want to like toot my own horn or anything, but I had a few kids come up to me and said like, hey, I like learned, I started looking into this after I saw you on LinkedIn. And I mean, really super cool for me. One of the coolest experiences has ever happened when a kid, first kid came up to me and said, I like looked at it because you were talking about it. But what happened is that like, I kind of almost put pressure on teachers in an essence of like, Hey, I'm talking about kids. Like these kids are using it at this school that, I mean, the faculty and not school business allowed me to give a presentation about artificial intelligence to them after I had been doing this for two months. So like, all I did was put like a little pressure on a pain point. And what happened is teachers like at a, like a literal whole university started to like think about it more. You know what I mean? And like what happened then is the students became kind of more open. And I found that kids were like asking about it more. Kids were asking me on LinkedIn, like, okay, if I do this, what happens? And then like, like I said, the conversation opened up. And then what happened in the conversation is that like kids became comfortable to like almost press back against teachers and then teachers became more comfortable that, Hey, this kid isn't like pushing on me. He's like working together. So then, I mean, I even heard teachers be like, Hey, how have you guys been using AI? Like, what do you use in your everyday life? And then what happens is it kind of allows for the students to teach the teachers. And if a teacher is like smart, I mean, why, why wouldn't you do that? I mean, that's how you learn from each other. And like, what I would say is that's like smaller university I went to, like I started talking about it a little bit and it opened up a conversation. And I would say a lot of things changed at the university. I mean, I was talking to deans and things like that, but I mean, all that is, is that I talked about it and I was like, I'm, because the cool thing is like, I was, I was working for my ed tech startup. So I was trying to like learn from the students, you know what I mean? Like what they need, what they want. And really what that helped me do is just understand that, hey, we're all learning together and it needs to be a conversation about this is how I do it. What do you think? How do you do it? How can we like learn from each other and do it together? And in essence, and like the biggest thing is if there's a conversation between teachers and students like, hey, this is how I used AI. No, I don't think you should use it that way. You should use it this way. Or, oh, I didn't think about it. Like we can almost mold like education can be a thing where like the people that are older than us just kind of guide us from their experiences to learn what they want us to learn rather than I teach you this, you learn this answer question on test. And that's the thing that I think is like one of the, one of my teachers said, Hey, look at a book 500 years ago and look at a book today. They look a lot different. You look at a classroom 500 years ago, and you look at a classroom today, they look a lot similar or they, they look very similar. And then kind of, I don't know, it's just that we need to open up this dialogue. There's a technology shift like we haven't seen before, in my opinion, in the education space. And uh, just kind of like swallow your pride on both ends of things and be acknowledge that I can learn and that we can learn from each other and just ask questions and be, be confident if you are using AI that like you can teach someone on how to use it and that can really change someone's life, I guess. I mean, and that's the biggest thing before I like wrap this up is that I want to say that artificial intelligence has the opportunity to help people that have never had the opportunity to be helped in education before. Uh, I have some like close family, friends, all that neurodivergent community and, uh, Teachers really need to understand that these kids are really smart and they can use this help. And that's one thing that I'm incredibly passionate about is that neurodivergent people can be helped by artificial intelligence. And if teachers and educators will like open their eyes to learning about it, that we're going to see the world be such a cool, different place because all of these people that have never really had the opportunity to like be helped can be helped. And it's all just about like, like I said, swallowing your pride sometimes and saying, yeah, I don't know how to do this. Teach me. I would like to learn. And yeah, I really appreciate this. It was a lot of fun talking to you today, Jason. Yeah, thank you so much. And I think the points you ended with are huge. I think that if we're going to really adapt, if we're going to meaningfully change to this world that is shifting so fast, really, we're going to have to be humble. I think you're right. Yeah. I think your point about humility is so 
key, being able to recognize, which is hard for everyone, that we have these gaps in our knowledge and we need to find ways to just learn and take that humble position, be willing and open enough to learn. It's also going to test our ability to listen. I think we have to do a much better job of listening and collaborating with each other. This is, an, at least for me, an all hands on deck situation. We're trying to figure out what this world is going to look like and what we want it to look like. And that's going to take as many people and as many voices as we possibly can take on. And the other thing that's going to be tested is how, well, how good we are at dealing with ambiguity. We don't know what the world's going to look like in a year or five years, or 10 years, especially now. The shifts are so, they're coming so quickly that it's hard. It's going to be impossible to predict what's going forward. So we're going to have to find these ways through collaborating, through listening, through being humble, to actually deal with that level of ambiguity. And I think all of this, all of those skills are going to be really, really tested by this. So thank you so much, Zach. Thank you for coming to talk and you know, giving our, our listeners and everyone on LinkedIn and the internet more broadly, um, just a little bit of sense of what students are talking about. So I appreciate you coming on today. Thank you so much. Yeah, appreciate it. Yeah, I had a lot of fun.